Hey, it's that time of year again where you can win up to $2,500 in prize money by supporting Prairie View Athletics at the same time. All you have to do is register for the Prairie View Athletic Club annual raffle ticket prize giveaway. Simply dial 936-857-5817. $1,000 first prize, $750 second prize, third prize is $500, and fourth prize is $200. $50. Call and register today, 936-857-5817. Prairie View Athletic Club, proudly serving Prairie View Athletics since 1986. That number again, 936-857-5817. This is Rob Butler with a little FPS football news. I'm going to start with the Southland Conference game of the week this week. That's Northwestern State at Alcorn State. That's Saturday at 6 p.m. That's in Mississippi. You can catch it on ESPN+. Plus. Now, the first three seasons of Brad Laird's tenure as a head coach of his alma mater have produced record-setting offenses, turnover-happy defenses, and arguably the most challenging set of circumstances faced by a Northwestern State football team. As Laird enters his fourth season at the helm of the Demon football program, he is ready to build on the promise shown in an abbreviated spring 2021 season. Now, in four seasons, Fred Air McNair has coached the Braves to four SWAC East Division titles and a pair of SWAC championships. The two-time SWAC Coach of the Year winner brought the Braves to the Celebration Bowl in both 2018 and 2019. He is the original Air McNair and the older brother of the late Tennessee Titans quarterback and 2003 co-MVP Steve Air McNair, Air the second. Now, Northwestern State kicked off its fall season since 2019, first fall season since 2019, by traveling to North Texas in a matchup of former Southland Conference rivals. North Texas' final Southland football season came in 1994 which marked the most recent meeting between the teams. The Demons turned the ball over four times, allowing North Texas to pull away for a 44-14 victory at Apogee Stadium. Quarterback Caleb Fletcher was 13-22 of for 134 yards with one touchdown pass and an interception. Workhorse running back Scooter Adams carried the ball 12 times for 92 yards and a rushing touchdown. Wide receiver Kendrick Price Jr. had one reception, but it was a big one. Fletcher hit Kendrick Price on a slant route, and Price broke through a one-on-one -on -one tackle, turning it into a 65-yard touchdown. Now, it had been nearly two years since the last time Alcorn State played a football game before suiting up to face North Carolina Central in the MEAC Swag Challenge to open the 2021 campaign. North Carolina Central came away with a 23-14 victory. The game was nationally televised on ESPN, and no, that's not ESPN Plus either. Braves quarterback Felix Harper was 17 of 27 for 154 yards and two touchdown passes without an interception. Running back Stafford Anderson amassed 105 yards on just seven carries in the first half, including a long run of 68 yards in the opening frame. Anderson finished with 128 yards on just 11 carries. Wide receiver Juan Anthony Jr. had five receptions for 66 yards and a touchdown catch. Now here's my prediction. The Braves will bounce back from their upset loss in the opening week and prove that they can still be a contender for the SWAT conference title. Northwestern State will not make it easy, though. Alcorn State wins this one 28-24 over Northwestern State. Now on to the Western Athletic Conference Game of the Week. This is number 10 Weaver State at Dixie State. This is Saturday at 8 p.m., you can catch it on ESPN Plus. It's in St. George, Utah, Greater Zion Stadium. Jay Hill is in his eighth season as a head coach of the Wildcats. Hill has transformed the Weaver State program and has led Weaver State to four straight Big Sky Conference titles and five straight trips to the FCS playoffs. The Wildcats have been ranked as high as second in the nation, the highest in school history. After seven seasons, Hill has a career record of 52-32 and 32 at Weaver State. 52 wins leaves him just short of the full record entering the 2021 season, and his 62% winning percentage is the second highest winning percentage in Weaver State history. Now, Paul Peterson begins his third season at the helm of the Dixie, Dixie State Trailblazers in 2021. The Trailblazers are in their first full season as an NCAA Division I FCS program. This past spring, Peterson led the Blazers to a 2-3 overall record 
which included a 26-14 upset win at the number 22-ranked Tarleton State Texans in Dixie State's FCS debut game on February 27, 2021. During his first year on the Dixie State sideline, Peterson led the Trailblazers to an 8-3 record in 2019, marking the most successful season of the program's 14-year NCAA Division II era. Now, Weaver State returned to fall football for the first time in two years and had the lead early against the nationally ranked Utah Utes. But the Cats had to handle a long weather delay and the 24th ranked Utah Utes defeated Weaver State 40-17 last Thursday night at the newly renovated Rice Eccles Stadium. The Wildcats had 270 yards of total offense, that's 213 passing and just 57 yards rushing. Quarterback Bronson Barron was 21 to 33 passing for 213 yards and one touchdown. Tight end Justin Malone led the wide Wildcat right Tight end Justin Malone led the Wildcat receivers with five catches for 50 yards, and wide receiver Ty McPherson had five catches for 48 yards. Running back Dante McMillan had seven carries for 39 yards, and running back Josh Davis had seven carries for 17 yards. Now, Dixie State opened its 2021 fall season on a sour note after a 19-7 loss to Sacramento State last Saturday night inside Greater Zion Stadium. The Trailblazer defense was stout in its season debut despite playing nearly 38 minutes on the night. After surrendering 225 yards in the opening half, the Blazers held Sacramento State to 176 second-half yards. Quarterback Cody Wilstead finished 15 to 31 passing for 158 yards, which included the junior's first interception in nearly two full years. Dixie State was also held to just 55 yards rushing on 24 attempts, with freshman running back Salai Conley picking up 26 of those yards on eight carries. Now here's my prediction. Weaver State Wildcats have won four straight Big Sky championships, while the Dixie State Trailblazers are new to Division I as they become full-fledged members of the WAC in 2022. Weaver State wins this one 34-13 over Dixie State. Now we got some other games of interest. Lamar is at UTSA. UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer led the Roadrunners to a 37-30 upset victory over Illinois last week. It was just the second victory against a Power 5 opponent in program history. Lamar dominated a non-Division 1 opponent last week, taking down Houston-based North American University 47-3. UTSA wins this game 42-13 over Lamar. Stephen F. Austin is at Texas Tech. SFA rallied to defeat Tarleton State 20-10 in its season opener. Texas Tech scored 31 unanswered points to take down Houston 38-21 last Saturday night inside NRG Stadium. Texas Tech wins this one 48-10 over SFA. Southeast Missouri State is at number one Sam Houston. The Red Hawks dropped their season opener at home 47-21 to nationally ranked Southern Illinois. The Bearcats compiled 591 yards of total offense in their 42-16 win over Northern Arizona inside the walk-up Sky Dome last week. Sam Houston wins this one 35-20 over Southeast Missouri State. Louisiana College is at Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian opened its first season in the WAC last Saturday evening with a 56-9 loss to the SMU Mustangs in Dallas. The Wildcats hung with SMU in the first quarter before the Mustangs pulled away. Abilene Christian wins this one 66-0 over Louisiana College. Fort Lewis is at Tarleton. The Tarleton Texans opened their game against Stephen F. Austin with all the excitement and energy needed in a season opener, but the Lumberjacks won at 20 to 10 despite the Texans' stout defense. Tarleton wins this one 49 to three over Fort Lewis. Number 13, Southeastern Louisiana is at Louisiana Tech. The Lions scored 22 straight points in the second half to pull away for a 49-28 victory over North Alabama in the season opener at Braley Stadium in Alabama. The contest was originally scheduled to be played in Hammond, Louisiana, but the effects of Hurricane Otto forced the game to be moved to Florence, Alabama. Louisiana Tech coughed up a huge lead to lose 35-34 at Mississippi State last week. Louisiana Tech wins this one 38-31 over southeastern Louisiana. Now Nichols is at Louisiana Lafayette. The Colonels knocked touchdowns in its opening drive of each half against Memphis 
But the Tigers scored 32 straight points in between as Nichols fell in their 2021 opener 42 to 17 at the Liberty Bowl. The Raging Cajuns trailed their season opener 14 to 6 at halftime, but were worn down in the second half during Coach Steve Sarkeesian's debut with the Longhorns. Louisiana wins this one 45 to 24 over Nichols. Now Northern Colorado is at Houston Baptist. Even though Colorado defeated the Bears 35-7 in the season opener, Northern Colorado head coach Ed McCaffrey was bullish on what he saw from his team. Houston Baptist recovered from a slow first quarter start to get within a score in the fourth quarter before falling to New Mexico 27-17 in Albuquerque. Houston Baptist wins this one 37-34 over Northern Colorado. Now McNeese is at LSU. Cody Ogeron threw for 367 yards and two touchdowns and ran for another 35 yards and a score. But the number one team in Division II, West Florida, took advantage of critical McNeese penalties and scored touchdowns on six of ten possessions to beat the Cowboys 42-36 in the 2021 season opener. LSU sure didn't start the season the way they wanted after falling 38-27 to UCLA in the opener. This game is intriguing because LSU head coach Ed Ogeron is McNeese quarterback Cody Ogeron's father. LSU wins this one 48-13 over McNeese. And finally, Prairie View A&M is at Incarnate Word. The Panthers outgained Texas Southern 486-274 in their 40-17 season opening win. Incarnate Word kicked off its first game of the 2021 season with a 44-41 overtime loss to Youngstown State in Youngstown, Ohio. The Cardinal defense has a lot of work to do if they want to contend in the Southlands. And Cardinal Ward wins this game 41-37 over Prairie View. And that's Rob Butler, Open Mic Broadcast Network. The Open Mic Broadcast Network would like to take this time to recognize its sponsors and underwriters. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, Prairie View Athletic Club, Temple of Refuge Ministries, Reflections Paint and Body Shop, Helping Hands Lawn Service, the Hotline Press Newspaper of Hempstead, Texas, Diva Skin Conditioner, Purple Drip, Daiquiri, and Grill. For more information on how you can become an underwriter or a sponsor here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, our number to call is 832-213-8824. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas. Welcome back to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline to our P3 Pick'em sections here. And I come in limping on on licking my wounds. I got beat up pretty bad. I guess went undefeated last week. And I got to bow down and say, welcome back, sir. How you doing, Coach Petaway? Hey, I'm doing fine, Doc. I'm doing fine. Uh, I, I'm uh still reveling in the fact that uh, I was lucky enough to pick them all right this time. Yeah, man, and did you pick them all right indeed? Um, I guess the biggest letdown for me um, was the Jackson State FAMU game. Not a lot um, explosiveness that I was anticipating, and it could be I'm looking at a 50-50 reason. Good defense, but the offenses were really lackluster. And it was one of them stretch yawn deals. So seven to six was the final score. How did you see that game, Coach? Well, the same way that the, that the offenses were not uh, they were not ready. Uh, Jackson State, you know, I, I thought they had enough weapons that they, I knew they'd win the game, but I thought it would have been a, a lot of points on the board and. You know, Florida and them comes in with a reputation of having a high-powered offense. So I thought both teams would, would get up and down the field. And it was a defensive struggle, or it was the defense is showing that the offenses were not ready to play. Absolutely. And I guess the other one that I fell short on was, of course, uh, Boise State and Delaware State. Even though Boise State uh, came with a valid effort, just came up a little bit short, lost by eight. 32-24, I believe, was the final score in that one. I guess much to be expected, but I felt pretty good about them. Delaware State came out with all cylinders clicking in that one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, I, I figured the, the Delaware would be ready for a good home. Uh, they were playing at home, so I figured that uh, they'd be ready to play. So there were a lot of surprises this weekend, e- even the A&M-South Carolina State game. 
I did not figure that game to be that close. And South Carolina State, you know, they they fought to the end. Uh, I was able to, for the first time to sit and watch a game, even though I it was my first time viewing it from the visitor side. Uh, that was the side that had the least amount of people on it. So it had me a good seat, and I I saw some great football by uh, two teams. And like Coach Maynard said, it wasn't really the Swag Miak challenge, but it was because both both teams came from different conferences, and and we needed that after Alcorn let us down in the uh, Miak Swag Challenge. Yes, sir. We actually dubbed that game as the Swag Miak Challenge 2.0 because of the very same thing. And it by far was the most exciting game of oh, yeah. the weekend. And uh, it, it was absolutely, I would say, worth the price of admission. 42-41 was the final score. And, you know, I, I had to call and check on you after that one, Coach, make sure that everything was lined up, uh, which, man, uh, but an exciting game and, and, and good to be in the atmosphere of a game like that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. They, they had the heart racing now because you were pulling because, uh, South Carolina State was not going to give up. And, you know, the battle of the Bulldogs, and, and I'm just happy that the right Bulldogs came out on top, and that was Alabama a and Yes, sir. And then our SEC game, uh, it was a good game. And even though it was a low-scoring game, but what a physical game it was between Georgia and Clemson. And you were rolling with your Bulldogs, and you came out on top again, sir. Right. Well, I, I felt that. Georgia, Georgia's strength would be their defense, and I thought that they would create enough wrinkles to uh, to throw Clemson off, and that and that's exactly what happened. Uh, neither team could really get it done on the offensive end, but Georgia just made a few more stops than uh, Clemson, and they were able to win that football game. It was a great game. Uh, a lot of people was looking forward to that game because you had a matchup of two teams in the top five, and 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 they know that this game set the tone for the rest of the season. So uh, I was just happy to come out on the good side. Yes, sir. Well, you went 10 uh, to 7 that you beat me head to head this past week. So that now puts you 10 and 1 overall, and I'm 8 and 3 overall. So I, I took it on the chin. And, um, but we're going we gonna to fight back. We're going to fight back. And um, we're going to have – I'm looking at from the MEAC side of things this week, I think we might go straight down the board on this one when we look at the games that's matched up. So we might as well start with the MEAC and we'll work our way over to the SWAC. Uh, first first game will be Norfolk State taking on Wake Forest. And you, and you make sure that you, that you put me down for, uh, for Wake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, ditto on that one. Uh, the next game would be, uh, let's see here, we got Morgan State taking on Tulane. Okay, that game will be played in Birmingham, Alabama. And Tulane, uh, I think uh, after this past weekend, they showed that they, they can play with the best of them. You know, they took Oklahoma to the wire. I'm going with Tulane. Yes, sir. Um, they played lights out, and maybe it was a charge of emotion and maybe a charge of letdown by Oklahoma. But regardless, Tulane showed that they came to play and they'll be ready to play in Birmingham. You'll be walking in. Uh, harmony on that choice as well. Our next game will be Georgetown taking on Delaware State. Yeah, they, Georgetown's going to Delaware State. I think that Georgetown will probably come out on top. I'm going with Georgetown. Yes, sir. That that will definitely be. And a lot of people, they say Georgetown has football. Yes, Georgetown does have football, even though they are known for their basketball dominance and history throughout the years. So we'll be in agreement taking Georgetown over Delaware State. We'll then move on to uh, South Carolina State taking on Clemson. And, yeah, well, I don't even think we got to even worry about this. I think Clemson will be upset because they lost to Georgia. They're going to take it out on poor South Carolina State. So I'm Clemson all the way. Yes, sir. Then we'll have North Carolina. Well, let me, for the record, I'm with Clemson on that one as well, unless you spot me 60 points. But uh, we'll be we'll be good on that one. Then we'll have the North Carolina Central Marshall. Yeah, yeah. So with with the Thunder and Herd at home, you know they're tough at home. I don't think North Carolina Central will stand a chance. So I'm going Marshall. 
Okay, we will thunder and hurry. We'll keep thundering right along. As we figure, we'll be in a walking in harmony on these picks from the MEAC this week. And then we finally have Howard taking on Maryland. Well, this to me, this is a no-brainer with Maryland playing as well as they are right now. Uh, I think Howard is going to be a long afternoon for Howard. I'm going with Maryland. Yes, sir. We will be, like I stated, uh, walking. Uh, what was uh, Ebony and Ivory walking hand by hand, you know, on the piano and keyboards? Uh, yeah, there won't be a problem with that one. So now we will gradually switch on over to the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Some interesting matchups on this week. And first game that I have on the gamut, Coach, is in your state, Alabama State, taking on Auburn. Right. Well, with with that one, uh, to me, that's a no-brainer. Auburn put up 60 points this past week. They got another 60 in their holster. Uh, I'm going to go with Auburn over Alabama State. Okay. Well, we'll be in agreement on that one. Auburn over Alabama State. And then we have Florida A&M will be hosting Fort Valley. Well, Fort Valley won't stand a chance, Sam. You, uh, they want to get on the win column and after losing last week, the Rattlers will be striking. So we're going to go with Florida and now. Okay, we'll say strike, strike, and strike again will be the case for Florida A&M. So Florida A&M uh, will be the pick for us in that one as well, which now leads us to Bethune-Cookman picking on University of Central Florida. Yeah, Bethune-Cookman's got to, you know, travel within state and, uh, Central Florida will be ready for them, and I'm going with Central Florida. Yes, sir. We'll be in agreement on that one. Northwestern State taking on Alabama State. No, that'll be I mean, Alcorn State. Alcorn. Take, right. Yeah, right. Northwestern yeah. State taking on Alcorn State. Right. Well, uh, in this one, even though Alcorn staying at playing at home, uh, I wrote down North, Northwestern. I'm going with Northwestern hmm. on this one. Northwestern. Now, see, this was this is probably where we might have our first split. Yep. They're on the reservation. Disappointing loss. And I just believe in the coaching staff to get them prepared at home. And I'm going to take Alcorn on this one. I'm going to take Alcorn okay. on this one. So that's right. our first – that's our first divide of the week. Correct. All corn, don't let me down. I need y'all right now. I need y'all <laughs> right now. Okay. Then we will go. Miles College will be taken on Southern University. Right. Even though Miles probably should have won the game at Alabama State this past weekend, the only mm-hmm. room again, I'm thinking that with the travel, I think the Southern fans, after, after taking that shellacking against Troy, I think Southern will bounce back, and being at home, they'll win. I'm going with Southern. Yes, yeah, Southern should win this game. Uh, they were uh, pretty much handled by Troy, and they'll be able to redeem themselves, I think, quite comfortably on that one. I have the Jags winning in a runaway in that one. Next, we would have Gramlin taking on Southern Mississippi. Well, I think the Tigers – they got their first win of the season. But going into Southern Miss, I don't think Southern Miss, the Eagles are going to let them out of there. I'm going with Southern Miss on this one. Yes, sir. Southern Miss should win that game at home. Uh, Grambling will come out of that one one and one. Next, we have Texas Southern on the road to Waco, Texas, to take on Baylor. Well, I think uh, Texas Southern got beat last week, and they'll get beat again this week. I'm going with Baylor. Yes, sir. That that's a, a no-brainer. Um, I just want Texas Southern to come out of the game as healthy as possible. They'll be at Rice next the following week, and so uh, it's going to be very important that they come out of there healthy and headed in the right direction. Which now leads us to another interesting matchup, and that will be Tennessee State taking on Jackson State. Yeah, this game will be played in Memphis, so it's on a neutral slide. I'm going to go with Dion and Jackson State. I got Jackson State on this one. 
Okay, I'm, you know what? I'm going to go with uh, Coach Sanders as well in this, in this one. Um, I believe Jackson State uh, got some momentum on the ugly win, and they're feeling good, and they should be the last Tiger standing in this battle in Memphis, Tennessee. And last but not least for the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Prairie View take their show on the road to take on Incarnate Word. Well, I'm going to go with uh, Prairie View won their first game against their rival. But I think being on the road at Incar- Incarnate Wood, going all the way up to San Antonio, I'm going to go with the home team. I got the wood. The word, Incarnate Word. Yes. Incarnate Word. Now, see, Coach, you, you, you messing me up. You know these are my Panthers. And, and... Right, right. Um, they look you gotta, good. You got to go with the home team. You, you, I understand yeah. your loyalty is with yeah. them. My, my loyalty is is so much purple and gold. Um, Incarnate Word, good program. Right. Uh, scored 41 points against Youngstown in a loss. And Youngstown was a good fifth competition and a good measuring stick. Prairie View. Coming off strong, 40-point going against Texas Southern. Even though it was on the road, technically kind of at home in Houston. Oh, man, decisions, Coach. Go with your heart. Go with your heart. You know my heart is telling me Prairie View. Okay. But. Final answer. (laughs) (laughs) I, I I could see Incarnate Word winning this game. Because of the fact that they're at home. And, ah, man. Ah, I got to, I'm going to have to pick the home team in this one as well. I'm I'm going with Incarnate Word, but Lord knows I want the Panthers to win. But I got to keep up with you, Coach. I can't get too far back. And just so, in case we have a tie in the yes, SEC sir. this week, I think it's going to uh-huh. be a good matchup between Arkansas and Texas, two teams that uh, used to be in the same conference for years. Yes, sir. So they're yes, renewing sir. That. They're renewing that, Arkansas and Texas. And I'm going to take Texas in this contest. You're going to take Texas. Right. Oh. <sighs> Forcing me into another corner, coach. You're forcing me into another corner. And they're playing at Arkansas. They're playing at Arkansas, and I do understand that. I do understand that. Um, Odoms, who came from Missouri, taking on the task of Arkansas. Arkansas has struggled, even though they're in the SEC DNA. It's probably not going to be enough for them to hold off Texas, even though Texas has been underachieving. Huh. Home team, Texas team. Then you got to think about the huh? old Southwest Wild. Yeah, I know the old, but they ain't got nothing to do with the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know what, Coach? I'm going to have to go with the burnt orange and go with the longhorns on this one uh, as well. So it seemed like our only two divides would be all corn and northwestern state. Yep, yep. And was that it? I think that was it. Might have been it. Yep, you might be right. Because I've That's got, the... uh, yep, yep. Okay, well, I guess those are our final answers. So. Maybe I get to make up some ground, um, and I sure hope I'm wrong with the Prairie View Incarnate Word, but at least we'll both be wrong in the pick em section, you yeah. know. But uh, Prairie View, don't take it personal. This is about competition, y'all. I love you, but I got I to gotta catch up with this man. He's got me down <laughs> in a hole, and I got to catch up with him. Uh, but it was a coach. I wanted to touch bases real quick before we wrap this segment up. I was thoroughly disappointed. Uh, with the way I'm calling them the the 
Puppet Masters, ESPN. Mm-hmm. They had Prairie View, Texas Southern game, originally posted to be on ESPN3. You go to look it up, it was on ESPN+. Plus. And they're switching these games up. They tell them this is going to be in the, the network, and they put it in where we have to pay twice. And the reason I say we pay twice because if you have any type of cable subscription, you're already paying seven dollars and twenty six cents for the ESPN, okay? And then they add this extra, and they say, "Well, it's only seven bucks a month." But it's the principle of things when you're asking me. It's the principle of things. I think it's false advertising. Am I too far out on a limb, sir? No, I don't think so. Because when it first came out, they did advertise that. Some of these uh, SWAT games would be on uh, the three, which is is their internet. And then for some reason, it was switched over so that they can capitalize on the market by forcing people to pay for plus they wanted to watch their team or follow their team. So it's yes, a, sir. Uh, I think it's a ploy by them to uh, make a little more money. And I don't think that it's worth it taking the money from HBCU fan base. I, I think in the, in the long run, I think it'll work against them. Uh, they have plenty of money. They, 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 their money is based off of advertisements for these Power Five teams. They've got all of them uh, leagues. They got all those leagues sold up to, to uh, just get pennies from us. I, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong. So you're yes, not sir. off. You're not. You, you're not off. I, I think uh, someone needs to look into that. Well, they, they, they like you stated, they buy up all the rights for these conferences, and then they force you to pay the extra to watch these games, and it's 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 robbing. It's robbing people, and it's absolutely unfair. And the only way, and I know I'm just, as they say, whistling in the wind right now, the only way that you can really combat stuff like that is that you don't pay for it. But they know we will pay for it, and they know that we're hungry for it and so thirsty for it. Now, if these were on the Swag Digital Network, I don't have a problem paying the Swag Digital Network because it's going to be supporting my conference. And this money, to my way I look at this, you're – Paying the middleman, in this case ESPN, to support your school when you can support your school directly. And I think they're taking advantage of some eager people. And I don't know why we think that that is the only brand that can carry our sports, but we really need to look into some new opportunities. I think think you hit the nail on the head in the conference. I'm quite sure uh, Dr. McClellan and his people have looked at that, and they're probably working right now to try to figure out uh, another re- uh, avenue for us to get our games out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, because as Popeye would say, enough is enough, and I can't stand no more. Mm-hmm. can't stand no more. Well, sir, the heat is on and the chase is on. I'm coming after you, and I'm, I'm, I've got to hold on. At least I can make a game advantage of leap back into this thing so it don't get too far out of hand. But it's always uh, good to, to get with you and talk with you about sports. And uh, they're starting to make their rounds in basketball right now. We'll be talking about that as it heats up. I got the Prairie View basketball schedule, a very healthy-looking schedule, and can't wait till we break that thing down a little bit more. But I want to give you some closing thoughts for this segment, sir, and the floor is now yours. Well, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's great and it's wishful thinking for you to say that you're going to close the gap. But you know what? you, you got to always have hope. So there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you having that hope. But, uh, you know, I'll be just like the wind. I'm here now and I'm gone. So uh, hopefully I can, maintain, I can maintain my lead. And I look forward to this all season. Uh, you know, one week doesn't make the season. So. We, I still got to, you know, be on my P's and Q's and uh, make sure that I'm picking them right. But I'm enjoying yes, sir. this, and uh, you continue to get the word out. That's the greatest yes, thing sir. in the world. Keep continuing to get the word out. Yes, sir. We're going to do that, 
And um, uh, the old song say, get ready, because here we come. Here we come. <laughs> and I guess you're going to be saying, hi, na, 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 hey, hey, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> he is Coach Sam Petaway, our basketball analyst, guru, mentor, friend, and brother here to the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Don't forget, follow me on Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel, subscribe today, is the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And you can always go to the website at obnradio.com. That is going to do it for this week's Pick'ems on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. And until the next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the other side. The station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, Prairie View, Texas.